So way back in January, I did a video about the 11 comic book movies coming out in 2018. It quickly became out of date. Some films got moved around, some got even pushed to next year, but overall it was a very extensive list, at least I thought it was. So extensive, in fact, that there were actually 12 films on the list, the 12th being Incredibles 2. Now, no, The Incredibles is not based on any particular pre-existing comic book. It's just a Pixar movie that happens to be about superheroes. But its comic book influences are so deep, so ingrained into the DNA of the script that I have no problem with saying that The Incredibles is one of the greatest comic book movies of all time. So today, in honor of Incredibles 2 coming out next week, I want to talk about the first movie. It's comic book connections and why I think it deserves to be ranked among The Dark Knight, Spider-Man 2, and all the other greatest of all time comic book films. The Incredibles came out in 2004. It was released by Disney and Pixar and directed by Brad Bird. The film tells the story of Bob and Helen Parr, two former superheroes known as Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl, respectively. They've been forced to go into retirement after the government declares supers as they're known to be illegal. Many years later, Bob is called back into action by a mysterious benefactor who wants him to perform superheroic tasks for a large salary. Turns out this mysterious man is actually Syndrome, a supervillain who wants to wipe out all of the remaining supers and give the people the ability to become superheroes in their own way. Now that sounds cool, but in the film, they kind of depict it as a better on paper sort of plan, kind of like Killmonger strategy. Mr. Incredible soon realizes that he can't defeat the bad guy alone. With the help of his wife and kids, he's able to confront Syndrome and do what heroes do best, save the day. Let's get the review part of this video out of the way right now. Even if I wasn't a fan of the superhero genre, The Incredibles would still be my favorite Pixar movie. It's just so unlike anything they had done before or really since. It's a big, high-concept action movie, and you don't really see set pieces or moments like this in other Disney or Pixar films. Plus, the dramatic element of the movie is very relatable. This is one of the best depictions of a family I've ever seen put to film. They bicker and fight, they worry about each other, they love each other exactly like a real family would. They just happen to have superpowers. And this is probably the best cast Pixar has ever put together outside of Toy Story. I mean, you got Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter, Jason Lee, and of course, Samuel L. Jackson, baddest mother Jedi in the galaxy. Play the obligatory clip. Honey! What? Where's my super suit? What? Now, because The Incredibles is a superhero film, it's inevitable that it's going to reference comics at some point, either intentionally or unintentionally. And even though it's not based on a pre-existing comic, it loudly and proudly wears its influences on its sleeve. Right off the bat, this movie bears a striking resemblance to the Fantastic Four. I mean, that goes without saying. Both The Incredibles and the Fantastic Four are about a literal family of superheroes, a husband, a wife, and their kids getting together to fight crime. Even their names pretty much imply that they are greater or better than the average man. I mean, even before when I was summarizing the film, I kept writing in my scripts Mr. Fantastic instead of Mr. Incredible. Can you blame me? And even though the power set of The Incredibles may not line up 100% with their direct analogs on the Fantastic Four, it's still pretty close. I mean, you got the big, tough, strong guy, you got the girl who can turn invisible, you got the stretchy one. Really, all you're missing is the kid who can turn on fire. Or are you? Even at the end of the film, spoiler alert for a 14-year-old movie, we're introduced to a new villain, the Underminer, who is pretty much almost an exact copy of the Mole Man from Fantastic Four. So as you can see, I'm clearly not kidding when I say that The Incredibles is the best Fantastic Four movie ever made. Hell, it's so good that the team behind the following year's actual Fantastic Four film had to redo a lot of their movie to try and match up with the goodness of The Incredibles. I mean, they couldn't clearly, but that just goes to show you just what kind of a good film The Incredibles was. But it's not just the Fantastic Four that The Incredibles draws influence from. It actually draws a lot of influence from a very unlikely source. Watchmen of all things. 
The Incredibles begins in what is clearly supposed to be the 60s. During this time, the government makes supers illegal after one too many lawsuits against them. All supers were forced to retire and forced to remain in their secret civilian identities. This is basically the same thing as the Keen Act from Watchmen, which forced its mass vigilantes into retirement after a lot of public and police unrest. And both The Incredibles and Watchmen have this running theme of nostalgia throughout. There's a lot of references to the 60s, a time when heroes were allowed to be heroes, when they meant something. A simpler time. A time of the Cold War. A time that also brought us Cold War era super spy, Nick Fury, as written and illustrated specifically by the legendary Jim Steranko. Brad Bird has said that Jim Steranko's work on Nick Fury was a big influence on the look of The Incredibles. Just the way it melded pop art and surrealism with contemporary comic book art styles. You can definitely see that in The Incredibles, especially during the great end credits. And while this isn't a direct reference, I still think it's a really fun fact to mention that Elastigirl isn't just a member of The Incredibles. She's also on Doom Patrol. That's right, folks. DC Comics actually has their own version of Elastigirl. The difference is being there's a hyphen in her name and her powers are more based on growing and shrinking her body not stretchy abilities like the movie counterpart or Mr. Fantastic or Plastic Man. Pixar did have to get permission from DC to use the name Elastigirl. They agreed to it, but under the condition that she not be named Elastigirl in any tie-in merchandise. So any action figures or video games that feature these characters, she has to be called Mrs. Incredible. Here's another fun fact that kind of ties into what I just said that you can impress your friends with at parties. There's a character on the Legion of Superheroes, also a DC property, called The Karate Kid. And the makers of those films also had to get permission from DC in order to use the name The Karate Kid. I could have been a doctor with all the knowledge I had, but I decided to use it for YouTube videos instead. There's more, obviously, but those are the big ones. And with big connections like that, it's kind of hard to argue that The Incredibles isn't a comic book movie. Sure, it's not based on a pre-existing comic book, but it's kind of like when I say that Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is the best video game movie of all time. It's not based on a video game, it's based on a comic book series. But it's filled with so many of the tropes and iconography and just overall feel of the video game that I count it as a video game movie. And I sure as hell think of The Incredibles as a comic book movie, one of the best, period. And everything I've seen from The Incredibles 2 from all the trailers looks like it's going down a similar path. From the retro-futuristic design, to the big bombastic action, to the great soundtrack, this is everything a sequel to a Disney movie like The Incredibles should be. And not... Redirecting to eBay. Ladies and gentlemen, the next item up, a black velvet painting of a sorrowful kitten. It's like it's looking into my soul. But what do you guys think? Do you count The Incredibles as a comic book movie, or do you just see it as a really good superhero film. Are you excited for Incredibles 2? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. Next week is going to be a little different. I'm actually going to be at E3 next week. You're still going to get a video, but it's going to be a little different from what you're used to. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for all of the E3 stuff that Bob and I will be doing next week. And of course, beyond that, we have new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday and Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern is Wolf Den Live. So make sure you subscribe to see all of that. Like this video, share it with a friend, a friend who's just as excited for Incredibles 2 as I am, because I'm really excited for it. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.